is that we're going to build interpreters now. And interpreters are required to do a lot of error handling. A lot of what separates a useful programming language from one that's frustrating to use is its ability to communicate errors effectively to its users. Okay, so what do interpreters do? Well, one thing they do is they read in the input program as text and interpret it as a hierarchical structure. So in the case of building a scheme interpreter, we're going to need to read in a bunch of parentheses and pluses and numerals and things like that and understand those as scheme lists, that is, recursive lists. So a scheme list is written as elements in parentheses. Element 0, element 1, blah, blah, blah. So this could be plus 1, 2, 3, for instance. And each element could itself be a combination or a primitive. So this could be plus, and then element 1 could be a second scheme list with more parentheses. So here's a particularly complicated scheme list, which also happens to represent a scheme expression. So this is a list where the first element is plus. Um, the second element is a whole list itself, going all the way to here. And in any well-formed scheme list, the number of left parentheses will be the same as the number of right parentheses. So part of reading scheme lists will be matching up those parentheses. But the other part of it will be figuring out whether all the individual numbers are well formed. So the task of parsing a programming language involves coercing a string representation of an expression in that language to an object that is the expression itself. So what does that mean? It means validating that there are no errors and creating a nested hierarchical structure out of something that starts out as just a bunch of parentheses and symbols. Parsers must validate that expression along the way. And here's a demonstration. So for the next couple of days, we're going to be looking at a program called Scalc, which is not as powerful as all of Scheme. It only supports the four operations plus minus times and divide. But it's going to be able to be a full functioning calculator for those four operations, but we're going to use the scheme style syntax. So combinations where you put the entire operator and operand sub expressions inside parentheses and the operator comes first. So today we're not going to talk about how to calculate. We're just going to talk about how to read in a scheme expression. So let's start with a demonstration. We start up the reader, and um, it's the kind of thing that allows us to type in expressions, and then it's going to print out the expression in two different ways. So these two look the same, but when I create a list, we'll see a scheme representation of that list, as well as an underlying Python representation, which explicitly states that this thing is a recursive list, that's a pair with one as the first element and pair to nil as the second element. And we get deeper nesting the more we go. Now this scheme reader isn't doing any arithmetic. So it's not actually summing one, two, and three. All it's doing is saying, I successfully typed in one, two, three. There it is. And its Python representation would look something like this. And um, it still works even if I put stuff on different lines with whatever indentation I want. So let's take a look at that program. Here's a schemereader.py that's available on the website and it's linked from the slides. It has a class called pair and pair is just like a two element tuple as a first and a second element. But it's special because when you print it out, you get a scheme style representation. So if I nest a pair within a pair, as I did here, then S still is a pair within a pair. But we print it out in the way that Scheme would print out the same thing, namely as two different elements in parentheses. That's how we write down Scheme lists. And there's some length and element selection operators built into pair that allow us to treat it as if it's a list by default. 
Okay, so that's pair. And then scheme read down here is the function that's doing all the work in this program that I'm running right now. And um, what's it do? Well, it takes in a bunch of lines. So here's a bunch of lines that I gave it, plus one, two, and then three is three different lines. So here's another example is we could put plus one and then on the second line, a nested list, two, three, four, and then an open parenthesis here. And what this is going to do is break that line into individual pieces and then call scheme read on the result. And the result should be that it figures out that plus one plus two, three, four is the first well-formed scheme expression in these lines. Now there's an open parenthesis here. That's not used in the first scheme read. We'd have to scheme read again to get that one. Okay, and we're going to study this uh, as part of your project. It is a recursive procedure where all the recursion happens in a function called the read tail, which after finding an opening parenthesis, read tail finds everything up until the closing parenthesis. And here are some examples of how it works. Now this program does do some error handling. So for instance, if I close parenthesis, then it's going to tell me unexpected token close parenthesis. And that happens because we raise a syntax error right here. And that syntax error is a class that's built into Python. The whole program just tries to read in expressions and then print out their result. And when it finds a syntax error, then it prints that out too, which is where we're getting this line right here. But this is inside a while statement that runs forever, which means that even after we have a syntax error, we're still in the same program we were in before. And other kinds of errors will be caught as well. So if I write 2.3.4, I'll get a value error invalid numeral. 